In today's video, we're taking a look at an all new product from HGLRC. Now we're actually looking at two stacks they're offering, which, which are called the HGLRC Zeus FD735 and also the FD745. The only difference with the two packages would be the ESC. Everything else is basically identical. So we're going to be covering both of those today. Now, with that being said, the timestamps are down below shown in the video progress bar, also in the description below. So you can skip to whatever part of the video you would like. And also the links to the products will be down below. If you could check those out, those obviously greatly support the channel. So some of the things we're going to be covering today is we're going to cover the basic setup, also advanced breakdown of this. So for the for the veteran flyers out there, we'll be able to understand a bit more of the components that we're looking at today. And after after the advanced breakdown, we'll go to our usual beginner setup if you don't know what to do or how to connect things. So with that being said, let's get started. So first of all, we're going to start off with the accessories here. Now, they're basically two stacks, and the only difference, again, is the ESC, but everything else is the same. The FD735 is basically the 35 amp variant, and the FD45 is basically the 45 amp variant, and they both come with this exact flight controller, which is the F7 right here. Some of the things we do get in the package, we actually get an XT30, which is really nice. And we also get an XT60, complete setup with wires and as well as the connector and the cover, which is, again, a huge plus here. And you also get two low ESR capacitors with each of them. So you, yeah, you'll get a small one and a big one. The small one here is 35 volt, 220 microfarad. And the bigger one, I think is around a thousand possibly. Yes, this is a 35 volt, 1000 microfarad low ESR capacitor. These are really great. I have tested these with real numbers. So I know these are great from previous testing. Now they also do provide you with the connector, which allows you to connect your flight controller to the ESC, which is really great. And it's a must. Now they do also provide you with some rubber grommets, but these don't go into the holes. They sit under uh, or on top of the board, whatever board you wanted to soft mount. And they also give you some pin headers here and they give you long metal screws. So this is really great to see here. So these are metal and they also provide you with the nuts that you need, which is really great. So they give you just about everything you need in terms of a stack. So now let's go ahead and jump into the advanced breakdown. I think we'll start with the ESCs here and then we're going to jump into the flight controller. Then we'll go ahead and do the beginner setup guide. All right, guys, so in this part of the video, we're going to be doing the advanced breakdown of the 35 amp variant, which is called the FD735. So this is the 35 amp version of the stack again. And again, both of them will be linked down below. So let's go ahead and get started here. So first of all, this is the 35 amp version. So it's the less powerful version. So there's a couple things to look for. Now, personally, I wouldn't recommend this on a 4S setup above uh, 2300 KV, for example, uh, it, I'm not saying it won't work, but it's my recommendation for maybe this would be for some sort of a scene whoop. That would be great uh, for the 35 amp variant, because first of all, if we take a closer look at it, now, this is a BL Heli 32. So it's a BL Heli 32. It is three to six S, which is, again, really great. And uh, if we take a closer look here, we see the filtration is very minimal. So we have a total of around nine caps right here. Uh, actually, no, sorry, 12 caps. So this is on each side. I know they look kind of identical, but this is the top side here. And the way you know this is the top side is we have motor one, two, three, four. So if you ever install it, this would be the top side in your quadcopter unless you know what you're doing. Now, as we can tell here, if we take a look at the FETs here, we are using the smaller FETs, smaller size FETs. Again, this is a 20 by 20 board and it is using M2 holes, which means there are two millimeter holes and the spacing is going to be 20 by 20. Again, because it's a micro board. And here we have a shunt resistor for current reading. We have our microcontroller units, which I think are Cortex M zeros. Again, BL Heli 32. And the overall connector right here, uh, I'll give you the diagram for that as well. So if you ever get lost, you know how uh, how the layout is. If you ever needed to connect this ESC to any other flight controller. All right. And if you ever get lost on these ESCs from HLRC, both the FD45 and the 35 amp, this is the correct layout. So when you see the connector, this will actually be battery voltage. That's the output. Then we have ground motors one to four current and then telemetry here. So you can actually see that down there. So as you can tell, battery voltage motors one, two, three, and four current reading, which is coming from this current sensor right here. And then we have our telemetry right here. Now, again, it's very simple. Hopefully it's very simple. Your battery would go right here. So you have your positive wire go here, which is the red one. And you would have the black one go right here, which is going to be the ground, obviously. Now you, you're still left with two pads on the bottom. And what I'd recommend you do there is add the, the low ESR capacitor, whether it would be the 1000 microfarad or whether it be the 220 microfarad, depending on your build. Now, no matter what build you have, if you have space to accommodate the larger one, 
it's always better. Now, the overall circuit is very simple. It is the bare minimum to get this going. Here we have our 3.3 volt regulator. Actually, let's change the color here. So here's our 3.3 volt regulator that's gonna be supplying power to the microcontroller units because obviously these take 3.3 volts. So here's our microcontroller units right here. And again, here we have our four tier FET drivers. Now these will be the interface between the uh, microcontroller unit and the FETs. So the FETs will be activated from this when the flight controller is actually telling us which to activate and deactivate. At the same time, I want you to take a closer look at the, uh, you know, the, the motor pins right here. They're pretty small because, and again, it's not, this is not meant for a heavy load quadcopter. Uh, you could still get away with putting it on a full 5 inch 4S setup and possibly a 6S setup, but you don't want high load, high KV, high pitch setups on this. I'm not saying you won't handle, I'm just saying it's it's better not to you know it, it, there's some flight you know there's some ESCs made for that and there's some ESCs not made for that this is more of a recommendation towards a scene whoop 1407 motors even a 6s 1407 motors things of that nature this would fit the job perfect um and again i'll repeat that again this does not mean you can't use it on a 4s 5 inch setup that has somewhat of a decent demand but it's a recommendation not to that's my point of view and that's what i would recommend to you so that's really it for this one there isn't really much to talk about let's go ahead and jump to the 45 amp variant now all right guys so now we're taking a look at the fd45 so this is the 45 amp variant here and it is meant for slightly larger quadcopter so you could you'd be able to run this on a slightly high kv 4s setup and a slightly high k i wouldn't recommend it on a high kv 6s setup which is like a 1900 kv 6s setup you know I, I wouldn't personally put this on there now some of the things we need to take into consideration here it is a 20 by 20 so it is a small board the mounting hole or the hole size is m2 so that's two millimeter holes right here. So make sure your frame could accommodate that. We don't have edge plating, unfortunately. And this is kind of a first, I think, from HLRC now. And it is also a BL Heli 32. Now there is, it's actually missing something on this board. If you take a closer look and you can't find it, which is current reading. We don't have a shunt resistor for current reading, which is kind of weird. And HLRC should have really added one here because I think that's very important for a lot of people. Maybe unless some sort of a scene whoop or something, a 6S scene whoop or some kind of, I don't know. But yeah, we don't have current reading here unless I'm missing something. But I, I removed that sticker. I didn't find anything. So that's one drawback here. Now, uh, it does have a couple nice features here. So we can see the filtration is really good. Really, really good for such a tiny board. This is actually beautiful. And we see that they've also added a copper pad right down the middle or a copper rod down the middle. And this improves power delivery down to your motors and it gives it less resistance, so less heat. So it's good overall. This just gives you more copper traces to have more power go through. Now, also, if we take a look at the bottom side, this is actually the bottom side right here. We see that it's two board layout. You can see the top board. This is the top board right here. You can see this area and it's connected to this board right here. So what they're doing is they're keeping all the power delivery on one board and splitting the logic into another board. So this does the, you know, basically the calculation of when to turn on a FET, when to turn off a FET, and it just, just does all of that. While the second PCB board, which is on the, uh, considered the top here, is going to handle all the power delivery and it's just going to have much bigger copper traces in order to deliver as much power as possible to the motors which is a nice design uh so here's the battery and again this should be the top of the board here so we have uh this area would be motor one this area would be motor two this area would be motor three and this area would be motor four so you know these three are motor four these three are motor three if you didn't know that power here's the positive side so if you didn't know that and this is going to be the negative side or the ground side right here so this would be the ground and uh, if we take a closer look here, let's see what we could find. It's also just a pretty basic schematic or just the, the same concept we're used to for ESCs. There's nothing uh, new, nothing extra. And um, yeah, it looks like a pretty decent board. I think it is available in some of their scene whoops right now, if I remember correctly. Maybe some of them. Now, uh, something I've also, I would have liked to see slightly differently, if, if it was possible really, is to put holes for the low ESR capacitor, or maybe even just like on the sides right here. Uh, it'll make people's life a little bit easier, but it's really nice. They've also thought about that and they've give you two extra pads here. So you can probably put your low ESR capacitor here and your motor wires here. Uh, if you're going to do it that way, I'd recommend you solder the motor wires first and then solder the, uh, the low ESR capacitor. Because if you soldered the low ESR capacitor first, then you went to go do the wires, the wires take more heat and the low ESR capacitor could just fall off, could melt off. 
but the, the, the legs from the low ESR capacitor don't need much heat on a small pad. So these are the, the motor wires are going to stay into place. They're not going to heat so much that they're going to have to, uh, that they're going to fall off basically. So that's how I do it. I'd start with the motor wires and then I'd turn the board around and then add that low ESR capacitor on the back. It's going to be much better for you. And again, here's the layout for the, uh, connector here. However, since this is the top side, and if you were thinking of soldering, which is really nice, they've broken out so you can solder as well. Uh, you're going to have to do this backwards. So here's battery. So this would be battery right there. So we'll just say bat. There we go. That would be battery. And this one, believe it or not, would be TX. But if you count these, it's actually missing one here. So here's ground. One, two, three, four. But there's no current. This last one's going to be telemetry. So keep that in mind when building it. And um, yeah, and well, that's really it for this board. So there's really nothing else I can talk about here. So let's go ahead and jump into the flight controller. And then after that, we do the beginner setup guide. All right, guys, so we've gone ahead and skipped the breakdown because I've actually broken this down with another stack that I've gotten a while ago. So let's go ahead and do the FPV camera setup guide. Now, there's two ways to get power for your camera. You do have battery voltage and 5 volt, but I always recommend you add them on 5 volt because on battery voltage, the voltage is not in a straight line. It's doing this. And the cameras don't have great filtration, so that's why you could end up seeing lines whenever you fly, punch out on different throttle levels. You'll see all kinds of different lines, and it just ruins your overall flight experience. So I highly recommend you add it on a 5-volt. So to access 5-volt, I'd highly recommend you take it from right here. So this is where you'd want to take your 5-volt from, uh, which I think would be the best setup right here. So there's your 5-volt. And the next thing we want to grab is we want to grab our ground. So obviously, so we give it power here and they have a ground ready for us over there as well, which is going to be right here. Now for the video line, again, it's very simple. They have this pretty much laid out, uh, very simple for everybody and right next to uh, each other here. And just like that, you've connected your camera. But if you're curious which one is battery voltage, uh, this is the battery voltage here. So let me just drop that line. So we'll call this bat. There's a lot of latency today in my pen. I don't know why. So here's battery voltage and this would be five volts right there. So there you go. If you wanted battery voltage, you would connect that to your camera or something else. And, and to get five volts, you'd go right here. Now, OSD, we really don't have anything here for OSD. So we could completely ignore that. And vSense, we really don't need here. So these are the three main wires you need to connect your FPV camera. Uh, so, yep, that's really it. Let's go ahead and jump to the next step. So now let's go ahead and discuss the video transmitter part. Now, before connecting your video transmitter, you need to take a look at the specification of your video transmitter and know what is the voltage for it. So there's only two in the market. There's ones that take five volts only, and you should only give them five volts. And there's other ones that say seven to 24 or 36 volts. And these are considered battery voltage VTXs. So what we're going to do today is we're going to cover both. And the flight controller has both in mind as well, which is really really great uh, for setting up here. So first of all, let's start off with the battery voltage. Now, if you wanted to give this battery voltage or you have a video transmitter that takes battery voltage here, that's where you're going to want to connect it right there. So we're going to call it uh, battery voltage right there. So that's battery voltage. Now, if you had the five volt here, then you'd want to connect it right there. So you'd connect the red line here, we'll call it five volts. So again, five volts, you'd connect it to this. If it's a battery voltage video transmitter, you would connect it to that and we're done with that part. So the next thing we need is obviously ground. Now we can grab ground from here and or here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to grab it from right here. So here's ground. Let's go ahead and connect that. And that's going to connect to your ground pin on your uh, video transmitter. Next one over is going to be our video line, which is one of the most important things, obviously, other than the power, because that's where the video feed is going to be routed to. And just like that, we have a complete setup. Now, if you wanted to set up IRC or smart audio protocol and what those are, it'll allow you to change the channel and output power of the video transmitter without pressing the button through the RC controller or through the OSD here. And the place you'd want to set that up would be right there. Everything is really simple on this flight controller. I really like that. And this would actually be TX3. So in your beta flights configuration, you want to go to the ports tab on the left, find UART3. So let's write that down. UART3. And then you go to the peripherals and enable either smart audio or IRC. And you would know that from the specification of your video transmitter. And just like that, 
you're basically done. Now let's go ahead and jump into the next step. All right, so in this part of the video, I'm gonna be showing you SBUS, IBUS, and also the TBS Crossfire, how to connect these up in the correct place here. Now, first thing we need is power for all of them, whether you're running SBUS, IBUS, or TBS Crossfire. So FR Sky, Fly Sky, or TBS, you're gonna need power, and they're all gonna get power from exactly the same place. So first of all, let's go ahead and start with the ground, and we're gonna grab our ground from right there, and we're just gonna run it over and give the ground to our receiver, whatever it might be. The next thing is going to be five volts. They're all gonna be exactly identical, whatever receiver you have, unless you have a spectrum which takes 3.3 volts, and 3.3 volts would be this pad right here. And this would be the five volts right there, so that we just ran right here. Now, the next wire is going to be our signal. That carries the information that we need to tell our quadcopter what to do. And that's just gonna go right here, and that's basically R1. So let's go ahead and connect SBUS. So this thing right here is an F7 flight controller. And what that means is that SBUS and IBUS will go into the same exact location right here which is really, really great and very useful. So the both of those, we just covered them. Now, if you wanted to install the TBS Crossfire, it has two extra wires or one extra wire with these right here. So the other pad that we would need would be this one right here. So let's go ahead and just move this off to the side and we're gonna put that there and we're gonna grab the green and we're gonna put it here. Now on your TBS receiver, what you wanna do is you wanna connect the TX to this pad right here and the RX of your TBS Crossfire so to this pad right here. So this would be the TBS setup. So this is the pad called TX on your TBS Crossfire. It would go to this one and the pad on your TBS Crossfire that's called RX is gonna go to this one right here. And just like that, you're completely done. The power is gonna be exactly identical unless you have something that takes 3.3 volts. Uh, but other than that, you're, you're basically good to go and we are done here. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Everything is linked down below. If you could check those out, those greatly support the channel. Also come join my Patreon, take a look at it. See if you like what you see. I do a ton of giveaways there, you get a bunch of perks. You get access to my open hardware schematics, like an open hardware flight control, do whatever the hell you want with it, sell it, make your own, I don't mind. And you also get a bunch of other perks. So check it out if you like it, join if you don't, then don't, it's fine. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.